everyone! I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and today we are going to play with some Easter egg day tablets! Yay! Now, given how things are, I'm not sure if we're all going to be able to get our hands on these this year. Uh, generally, you can't order these POS kits online. Um, usually, you can find them in stores, but if none of us are going to stores, I don't know. But I still wanted to try to do one more Easter egg dye tablet project before Easter takes place. Today we are going to insert these Easter egg dye tablets into a yarn cake. This is something that I did a few years ago. I did it again in a live stream, but I don't think I've actually done this for Dye Pot Weekly. Uh, feel free to correct me if I'm wrong though. Today's video is sponsored by Vincent in Portland. Vincent, thank you so, so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. If you would like to learn more about how to sponsor a episode of Dye Pot Weekly as a viewer, uh, you can find details in a listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. There might not be any available right now, but they will return some point in the future. Uh, and so I'm going to have the link there because maybe by the time you're watching this, it is the future. But anyway, Vincent, thank you so much. I'm also here today with a couple of off-screen observers. I'm Lucas Brown, and a yarn cake sounds yummy. And I'm going to leave the first rock, first rock. All right, and Ryder has neglected to say hello to the camera. But you will probably hear them in the background, and so please accept my apologies. If you don't know, these Easter egg dye tablets are a mixture of sodium bicarbonate, some other fillers, and food coloring used to dye eggs. But if we use a lot of vinegar, and more vinegar than usual, we can use these to dye yarn. The reason why we need more vinegar is because of that sodium bicarbonate. It will raise the pH of your water, which will slow down the rate that the colors absorb. This means that sometimes you can get some really wonderful spread of the colors, but by inserting them into our cake, we should also get uh, some local colors that will unravel really, really cool. So I think, and just to show you the colors that we are going to use, um, we've got orange, we've got a light green, a purple, a blue, another blue, and another green. So this is the color palette that we are working with today. From my experience, I know that the greens tend to spread a fair amount. I am going to place one of the greens into the center, sort of like right there, um, a little bit towards the interior. And then I'm going to do the deeper green, which I believe is this one, even more towards that center, but along the same sort of side. And then over here, I'm not sure if this is a deeper or the lighter blue. I'm going to put it maybe a little bit closer to the outside and put the other blue, I think, in here. The purple, I'm going to put all the way into the center. And then our orange, let's put the orange over here here towards that outside. I'm not sure how things will combine. I'm expecting that we will see colors come out of the cake and we'll see it as we start dyeing, but I think overall it should be a lot of fun. Since everything is food coloring based today, I am using a cooking pot. I am personally comfortable dyeing yarn with food coloring in the same pans I use for my kitchen. Of course, I do wash things in between. In this pot, I have eight cups of water and I'm going to add a whole cup of white vinegar. Um, we might end up adding more vinegar. We need things to be really acidic to counteract uh, the basic quality, the, the chemicals that will raise the pH within these dye tablets. I'm now going to turn on the heat and I'm so used to doing the, like, the full catering steam pan over here that I started to turn on both burners just out of habit. <laughs> but once things warm up, 
And I don't often use a lid, but I'm gonna use a lid just so we can try to keep the volume of water in there. Uh, I will be having some breaks for Zoom school and things like that during this process, but um, we'll let this heat up and then we'll add the yarn cake. And I plan to try to do a time lapse here, so I'm really excited. Uh, I haven't done like a time lapse for like this for a while, and it's really, really fun to do with dye tablets. All right, our water is boiling. I am going to reduce the heat so that way it is hot, um, but there's less movement in the pot. And now, let's add our yarn cake. I'm debating between whether to add it in this way or that way. But let's go ahead and do this way and let the top be the top. You can see some bubbling. Um, I am now gently placing it in with a slotted spoon and I'm now not going to touch it. And you can already see some of these colors start to bloom. I think the colors might spread more in this case than they did when we injected them in. See some blue leaking around the edge of the pot? I am gonna do my absolute, absolute best to not touch things um, moving forward, but the spread is fun. Uh, should we add more vinegar? Maybe. Okay, let's add around a half cup. And let's add another half cup. We'll make it approximately two full cups of vinegar. We've got a lot of blue on that outside and it's gonna take longer to strike than if I was just using straight liquid food coloring. I think what's happening in there is really exciting and I think this pop of orange should hopefully be fun. At least that is my hope. Um, but now, I mean, things might not change that much more from what we see now, but I am going to film a time lapse, so we'll see what happens. After close to 16 minutes, you can see just how much these colors have spread out. And we have this army type forest green. I'm not sure how much green we might get towards the center. It looks like we're gonna have a lot of blue there, which might give us a sort of proper gradient, but we will see. The orange has been mostly overtaken by the green, but that's just what we see on the outside. There will likely be some pops of that orange where the tablet is actually located. Now, one of the reasons why this can take a while is that the tablets have to dissolve. And since it takes them a little bit of time to dissolve and they are altering the pH locally, even with a lot of acid in here, it takes time for the acid to go back in. So in general, it just takes a lot longer. But I'm, I'm really happy with what I see right now. I am going to go ahead and we're just gonna add more vinegar. Now, through pouring this, that is sort of altering the way things are going. It did move the cake. We see some light green going over the top. Uh, at some point, you know, whatever happens, happens, right? But I am really, really excited to see this. This has been a while since I've done this. I've definitely done it with Stroll, and oh, I don't know if I said, this yarn is Knitpick Swish DK. It is 100% Super Waffle Merino, DK weight. I dye it a lot, um, but yeah, I guess I forgot to say that. Uh, this technique, ah, gosh, have I done it in a cake with, I don't know if I've done it with a non-Super Washable either. I am not sure how many tablets I have left in my stash, but I definitely have a lot of the alternate Easter egg type kits that some things that looked like that they would be fun to use for other applications that I've just saved. So uh, I have things and maybe at some point, I don't know if I could do that as a live stream or what, but we will consider bringing those out and playing with them um, during this time when I'm not leaving the house to go get a lot of new materials. 
But anyway, I think now I'm going to stop time lapsing and I'm going to let this sit for at least 30 minutes and then we'll come back and check on the color. But to show you guys, we've got like a nice sort of pale green that is fairly pigmented around that outside. All right. The water is starting to clear. It's been at least 30 minutes, maybe a little longer. There is a hint of some color around the pot, but what I'm gonna do at this point is I am going to turn off the heat and we're gonna leave things in here to cool. I'm assuming since we don't see color coming out anymore that the tablets are all dissolved, but I do want to give this access to that heat, vinegar, and thyme. The water has cleared really, really nicely, but you will definitely notice how different this yarn cake looks from the ones where we are injecting dye into the center of the cake. We want that extra time to let any color absorb, but when we were injecting dye into the center, yes, there was more acid, but we didn't have that sodium bicarbonate change in the pH in local places. I predict that if I were to do a cake and inject dye into it with food coloring, this is something that I should probably do in the near future. But I hypothesized that if I used the syringes and injected food coloring in different points with a similar yarn cake, which this one I did wind twice, by the way, but I predict that we might see something similar to what we've seen with acid dyes when we inject color into them so far, that the colors just don't spread quite so much. And I think, I think that the, the alteration of the local pH makes these tablets really unique and that spread that we see here. But that's just a hypothesis and clearly it's something that I do want to test. But once things have cooled completely, we will come and check back in, look at the bottom of the cake and rinse it a little bit uh, to let it dry. Vincent in Portland, I'm not entirely sure what I was expecting, but I don't quite think that this was it. I know that Easter egg colors can spread a lot. I am still just amazed by the actual huge spread. And here's the bottom. We do have, oh, we've got a lot of white in here. Okay, we've got a lot of green on the outside. It looks like a lot of white and we'll probably have some more true colors in the middle. It's just, you know, some of that color leaks out. This is in sharp contrast with what we've seen by injecting dye in various situations recently uh, because the colors just don't spread out and I do think it's because of that local pH where these tablets are dissolving. So right now, and oh this smells like vinegar, right now I am just gently rinsing out the cake. I will be putting it through my spin dryer and sort of leaving it flat to dry out. If you don't have a spin dryer, um, I, you could try rolling it in some paper towels. You don't want to shift things around in here too much, but having it drier makes it much, much, much easier to go and wind it onto a nitty naughty. But I will be going and washing this cake properly after we have unraveled it because we just can't really access that yarn in the center and who knows what could be left in there. It's been a couple days and Vincent from Portland's Yarn Cake is almost completely dry, but it smells strongly like vinegar. And I would say most of the yarn I dye doesn't usually still smell like vinegar once it's mostly dry, but we've barely been able to wash this. Uh, I am so, so curious. Like I know we took a peek in and ooh, look at that pop of blue. And ooh, there's some orange. Oh, I'm excited. I am really, really excited. Um, we just need to go and unravel this onto a nitty naughty, but I didn't want to take a time and peek in towards the center a bit. But once we've unraveled it, then I can show you guys what it looks like on the inside. Here is the beautiful, beautiful gradient that we created. There was a lot of green, but we have these shifts of color. So there's green with a few hints of orange in the more solid section. It gets more mottled with more white, and then the orange disappears, and at the end we have these little bits of purple. This asymmetric yarn is so much fun. Now, 
we haven't been able to properly wash this yet. I will be washing it off camera uh, with some plain tap water and then some dish soap uh, to, well, remove vinegar and then remove any additional food coloring that might still be here in this system. If, if there is bleeding, I'll leave a note on the screen, but I'm not expecting to see any bleeding. Uh, the color absorbed completely and I'm feeling very optimistic. You guys know how much I love Easter egg dye tablets, but it is so fun to use them in cake dyeing because whenever it's a complete surprise what you're gonna get, it's just fun. We know from many videos in the past that the average of Easter egg dye tablets is green. You know, it's just something that we've learned when they all mix together, you get sort of a nice army green. Something about the greens and the greens are just a mixture of yellow and blue, but something about it takes more time to absorb. And so, yeah, I'm still not 100% sure the best way to counteract that. I don't know if even more vinegar at the start would have helped. Um, certainly, if we were just dealing with, say, sunset colors, we wouldn't have seen this green average. Um, but these colors spread way, way more than what we see, say, with injecting dye into the center of a yarn cake. Now, you know what sounds extra fun to me? Uh, combining this with injecting acid dyes. I think that there's some potential in there. I think the more towards the center we keep these dye tablets, the less spread we see. Like these patches of color that were more towards the center are small. They pretty much stayed where that dye was placed. It's the colors that were more on the outside that gave us more of a spread. But I think that this yarn is really fun and unique. Unique for sure. Like when you do something like this, it'll be hard to get something that you can reproduce because little shifts like how tight or loose the cake is will make a huge difference. Vincent from Portland, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. I had a blast creating this colorway. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any new content. I am continuing to post two videos a week on Tuesday and Friday mornings, and there's still gonna be fun bonuses along the way. Hopefully some live streams, maybe even some unboxings, I'm not really sure, but I am going to do my best to continue to create fun yarn content for you, um, as I have for the past couple of years. Engaging with these videos is the biggest way that you can support me right now. Uh, commenting, liking, sharing the videos with your friends. Uh, but if you are interested in supporting the channel on another level, you can go check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Um, I'll have links in the video description and in the top right hand corner of the screen. But Thankfully, I am set with materials to make a lot of content. The biggest limiting factor that I have going on right now is time to film. So, uh, but you know, my family is working with me to make sure that I have some time to create some fun videos. Um, and I'm really, really excited to play with some of these resources I still have. I do have a collection of a bunch of alternate uh, Easter egg dye kits, which I have a feeling I will be pulling out <laughs> in the near future. And who knows, maybe the kids will even be joining me for some of those projects. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.